Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. I'm gonna tell you what, we were about 68 degrees today, 67 yesterday, so I'm gonna go, and go for it. Soil temperature's about right. Uh, put my pre-emergent down the other day, sprayed a little prodiamine, added some aerate and humic 12 in there. And we got about three days, four days maybe coming of off and on rain, about a quarter an inch a day is what they're calling for. So, you know, to me, when I think a quarter inch of rain a day, that's not a whole lot of rain. It's enough to kind of get things working in the ground and get going and that kind of thing. When you spread that out over a three or four day period and it's a quarter inch per day, you can add up to some decent rain, right? And over the course of that time period, with that slow rain coming, it's going to wash in my pre-emergent, going to wash in my aerate, wash in my humic 12, and wash in my protein. I got a new fertilizer I want to show you. Uh, first, we're going to spread it out over the yard out here, and then we'll come back over here and sit down at the table. We'll talk about it in a minute. Here's your good rule of thumb when you load your spreader. Of course, the only reason I'm saying this, I've done it, I've screwed up a million times. Make sure you're your, your whole opener thingamajiggy is closed, okay? So that when you pull your fertilizer in it, it just don't go whoo and flush out. Number two, I'm not a fan of loading fertilizer on grass, okay? Anything can happen and you, the last thing you want is a spill right there in your yard. So make sure you load your, your spreader off of your grass. And here's something else. I know y'all have seen me use this. Uh, this is a Lesco spreader. And this is a, it's called a Power Pro 50. It's a little gas powered, got a Honda 50 something engine on it. And it propels the spreader so you don't have to physically push it. Uh, LT Rich, the folks that makes uh, Z Spray or used to make them, they used to make this thing years ago. And I got lucky enough and picked one up and I've just kept it around. It didn't sell it and it works great. But what I'm getting at is, for the most part, I'm trying to work with the, the DIY crowd, the Joe, Joe homeowner crowd that wants to do things itself. And as part of doing that, I get asked this question a whole lot. It's probably one of the most asked questions I get is, what spreader setting? What setting do I put my, my fertilizer spreader on to go put my fertilizer out so that I can apply it safely and evenly? Well, I got a phone call from a company the other day. Said, hey, we make fertilizer spreaders. And I said, yeah, I know you do. Uh, Cause I got them in my lawn care guys and I offer them to, to folks. And uh, they're sending me a couple of them. And what I'm gonna do is use those throughout the year and the first couple of videos I do with these spreaders, uh, it's Earthways, who it is, is I'm gonna show you how I go about calibrating the spreader, getting it ready so that I can go out, put my material in here, fertilize the yard, and be overly confident that I've done it correctly, and I can replicate that over and over and over and over again, and I'm, I just have this overwhelming confidence that I'm doing it the correct way. I'm going to show you all that using the Earthway spreader. So get ready. That's coming in here in the next video or so. Now, most spreaders have an edge guard or, a, you know, side deflector. It's over here on the side. So that what happens is when the material is coming out, it's going to throw the fertilizer straight out or maybe a little bit to the right. And then mainly to this side. You know, most folks use that for... Uh, you know, using it to be able to keep fertilizer off of a sidewalk or maybe you don't want to get it in this particular area or whatever. And so that's kind of what the, you know, the ideal reasoning for that is. What I use it for and what, the way I like to use it is I still use it going down the edge of the road here and the road out front and my sidewalk in the front yard. Anywhere I got a hard surface is where I'm gonna use it. And I actually prefer to slide over just a little bit 
and actually get out in the road just a little bit and let some of the material get on the road. Now I know you're freaking out right now. Why in the world would you want to do that? Well, it's simple for me. What I do is I go back and I take my blower and I blow the fertilizer really easily, gently. I don't, I'm not trying to blow it back over in the yard. I actually want to leave a little bit packed up against the edge of my grass along the hard surface along the road out there. Why do you do that? It's simple. You hear me say it over and over again, the majority of issues happen along the edges. That is why I'll always put a little extra pre-emergent on the edges for a little bit more extended control, a little bit more aerate, a little bit more humic 12, a little bit more fertilizer. I'm intentionally trying to pump up my edges just a little bit more. Now I'm not saying go out and put enough out there to where your grass in the yard's this tall and along the edges it's this tall. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying just a little bit more and that's something you're gonna have to learn to do with feel over time as you continue to apply fertilizer and spray things on your yard you'll just you'll you'll know that you're you're just you know when you when you're using this equipment and pushing the spreader and using a sprayer you, you you get a feel for it and you know what's going out okay you've done the math you've done the calibration you know in your mind i'm comfortable i'm putting this much out per area and so when you maybe slow your speed down just a little bit in a certain area of the yard and what we're talking about now is the edge of the road you know for a fact that you're putting down just a little bit more not much not they're advocating to say that you go out there and just pound the edges with all kind of extra material that's not what i'm saying we're just trying to lightly give it a little bit extra food a little bit extra bios a little bit extra pre-emergent, not nothing over the top, just so we can pump the edges up just a little bit more than say the rest of the yard. Again, that's where most of the issues happen. All right, so now that I got my edges done, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna make me a path. Look at that, you can really see it good right now. That's where I'm doing away with this much grass right here it's about three foot because my cryptomeres are kind of getting the big so yeah you can watch all that crap no different video but i'm gonna i'm gonna make me a border pass is what i call it go all the way around my edging all the way around and then once i do that i'm going to mow grass so i'm going to pretend i'm mowing grass and i'm going to make straight line applications using my spreader All right, so if you noticed what I did there, so I went around my edges, caught my border pass. I don't even know what I call the one at the road, road pass, trim pass, I don't know, edge guard pass, call it what you want to. Now what I do when I get at the end of one of my straight line passes, I'll cut my spreader off, okay? Not the engine, but the, the discharge of the material, the hopper, the flow of the spreader, I cut it off. So that's why I cut it off at the end over here at this this wide pass to where i've already put my fertilizer down i don't need to put it down twice on this area i know it's going to be very difficult to pick it up on camera but right here is where my tire tracks were i i doubt very seriously you can see it but there's my tire track right over here is my previous tire track I can see them, I'm sorry if you can't, but they're there. The reason that is important is because I'm watching the material come out of the spreader, go over here, and it ends at my inside tire track. And so that's how I guide myself going back down the other way, is I'm constantly watching that previous tire track and following that line. Now I'm standing in the same spot. The, the spreader was sitting here just a second ago and you can imagine I go down there turn around slide over a touch and now look where I'm at now I'm looking at 
the previous tire track. When I was in this location, that one was the previous tire track. Now that I moved over, this becomes the previous tire track. So I'm throwing it from my impeller over to my previous tire track and I follow that all the way out. Now, what do I do? I'm telling you, I'm in trouble. I've got fertilizer left over in the bottom of the hopper. What the heck do I do? Very simple. You can see right here on my Lesco, I was running at a 13. I'm gonna back this down to about a number seven, roughly, or about half. And then instead of going back over the yard this way, I'm gonna go over the yard this way and use the same pattern. I might spread it out just a little bit further and not quite throw to the inside tire track because I don't have a whole lot of material left and I need to cover this 7,500 square foot right here. Now this time, this first time spreading fertilizers here, so I'm a little out of practice, okay? Forgive me for that. But I'm on a number 14, or was on a number 14, and I know now when I go down with my 12024 in May for the summer, I know the preel size is identical. It's the exact same uh, 180 SGN. So I know, and if I'm running the same four pound per thousand rate, which I will be, I know that I can bump that 14 up to maybe a 15 and a half ish. And that'll allow that little bit extra in the bottom be gone by the time I go over the whole yard. And this was supposed to be a video about protein. And here I am talking about a daggone spreader. So, sorry, it's gonna be a long video. I got a lot to tell you about the fertilizer. All right, so I'm gonna lay my little speaker right here. That way I don't have to wear it around my neck. Don't you get in my grass, boy. You can hit the mailbox. I need a new one. Let me know if you need some help backing that trailer. By the time I get started, my brother rolls up. I'll be back in a minute. All right, so those of you that like to read, uh, there's a little write-up I did. It's in the description below, and it kind of goes over this right here and tells a little bit more about it. So I guess the first question is why? protein uh protein's a fertilizer that i've known about for a pretty good while now and have always looked at it here and there read up about it and uh, always liked the fact that it was a more of a high-end type fertilizer uh they mainly sell to golf courses big sports complexes stuff like that for the most part they sell uh, you know full truck loads to directly to the end user and that's just how they run their business. So why did I go with them? Well, I understand what's in the bag. I know it's a good product. And the main reason is some of the fertilizers I've dealt with in the past, I, they're no longer available to me. So, I mean, it is what it is. And higher bricks, yes, I'm still working really hard trying to be able to get that in-house and be able to take care of the shipping and all and, and, and be able to offer that as well. So with all that said, you know, at the end of the day, we're running a business here, right? And uh, you need a good product. You need a good, solid, quality product to offer to people. So I like to think of myself as an intuitive kind of guy. So I kind of saw how things were going. And so I reached out to the guys at Protein last year. I said, hey, I want to get some of your product in here. Uh, this is my idea. This is what I want to do. And uh, I need to try it, test it, see some results, see how it's going to work. And you remember my yard last year uh and, and starting with you know around the fall of the year going through the fall into the winter um it, it i it looked pretty good i mean i'm gonna leave it at that it looked pretty dang good it was every bit as green and lush and thick as it has ever been before since i've been here so uh you know seeing's believing you know, I'm a, I'm a visual guy. I have to see results. I want to see how they work. And on top of that, we also bought a, an additional 4,000 pounds of it, and we run it on a lot of our customers' yards in the fall, and they those yards stood out. And we kind of worked out a deal with them, and uh, we 
have been able to make it available by the bag, uh, individual bag, and sell directly to the end user. So you know the drill, the link's in the description if it's something you wanna check out. So first and foremost, what are my favorite things about the protein fertilizer? Number one, it's a homogenous blend, okay? Homogenous meaning all the nutrients inside this bag this particular one's the one i'm using in the spring and i'll be using the same thing in the fall which is a follow-up to my aerating seed and it's a 20-0-5 20 percent nitrogen zero uh phosphorus uh five percent potassium and it's got four percent iron in it it's also got some sulfur in it zinc and manganese and uh, on the zinc and manganese, I have been uh, told that that's going to be coming out of their blend for whatever reason and will be replaced with something else in the near future. So if you get a bag and it don't have the zinc and the manganese in it, don't be surprised. When you talk about a homogenous preel, and the preel is the little tiny granular, okay? I know some of y'all hear me talk about this stuff and you ain't got a clue what I'm talking about, but when I say preel, that's the little tiny pebble of fertilizer, and it has it has a, a, a size number, okay? You know, some fertilizers are big and bulky, some fertilizers are super tiny, they may call it a, a, a mini grade or a mini preel or something like that. Well, this is 180 SGN, Typical fertilizer is going to be around 220 SGN, so this is going to be a smaller preel. Why is that important? Well, it's important because it spreads easy. It's super easy to spread because the preel size is small. And what makes this preel so cool is it's homogenous, okay? And what that is, is instead of having a bunch of different individual color preels, and each individual different color preel represents a different nutrient. A homogenous fertilizer is when you take all the nutrients in the bag and you wrap it up in one preel. So each individual preel has your MPK and whatever else is on the label, it's all inside that one preel. It's hard for me to say homogenous is the absolute only way because for 10 or 12 years, 10, 11, 12 years or so, I ran non-homogenous fertilizers, meaning I had the fertilizers with all the different little colors in the bag, and I had a problem. So it's hard for me to sit here and, 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 and honestly tell you that homogenous uh, will do, you know, on paper, yeah, it's going to do a better job, but in real world, is it really going to be that much better? It's just hard for me to sit here and tell you that homogenous is this much better than non-homogenous because I ran my fertilizer company for years and years not even knowing what a homogenous fertilizer was. But with that said, what is the advantage of it? Well, if you, if you had a handful of a non-homogenous fertilizer and you got all these little different tiny individual colored preels and you go out and you spread them on the yard you're gonna have a little bit of n over here a little bit of p over here a little bit of k over here a little bit of iron over here and a little bit of whatever over here you see what i'm getting but if you took a, a homogenous blend and you throw it out everywhere that granule lands you're gonna have your mpk 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 see where i'm going so basically in a nutshell a homogenous blend of granular fertilizer is going to allow the nutrients to be more evenly spread out over the area that you're treating. That's basically what it does. This is a 90 day feeding fertilizer. 90 days, three months. Let's do a little math. This bag right here is $70, shipped straight to your house. And that's one the price in the price of this stuff. It says free shipping, but you guys know it ain't free shipping. We we have to build the cost of the shipping inside the price. And when we stick it on the website, we call it free shipping. But in real life, real world, you're actually paying for the shipping. Because I mean, I can't pay for it. If I did, I'd go broke, right? All right, so we got a $70 bag of fertilizer. We're going to divide that by 90 days. It's going to come out to 0.77778, okay? We're going to call it 78 cent. So it costs you 78 cent a day for 90 days to use this product. Let's take a typical fertilizer at feed for 30 days, and let's say you paid 25 bucks for that bag. 
So that's 25 divided by 30. That's going to cost you 83 cents a day. So not only are you paying more, but you also have to apply it three times, whereas you apply this once. It's got ammonium sulfate in it, and what that is, that's your quick-release nitrogen aspect. The methylene urea, now that's more of a control-release uh, nitrogen. It's going to release more over time, and the same thing with the feather meal. And it's not too many fertilizers you see on the market. It's got feather meal in it, but that's like a, even a longer, slower releasing form of nitrogen. And of course, got some iron in it. And anybody that's been around turf any any length of time knows that iron equals color, right? That's why you get that that rich dark green color. Now, for the potassium in it, that's kind of important. And I I never really dug into this until I really got serious about my my lawn care here at my yard and in my business. Uh, you won't find me buying fertilizers that have M O P. Okay. Uh, muriate, murate of potash, that's a certain form of potash, and then you have a SOP, sulfate of potash. Now the sulfate of potash is a much better form of potassium, okay? Uh, you also get a little sulfur out of it as well. The MOP is basically potassium chloride, and if you know anything about those words, you associate chloride with salt. When I started learning about all this, you know, the different actual ingredients and the sourcing of different ingredients, and I started blending my own fertilizer in my company, I would, I would source out the highest grade, best uh, raw ingredients I could to put in the bag so that when I got done, I had a really nice product. And I just, once I learned things, I tried to stay away from MOP or, or murate of potash as, as much as I can because I just, I'm not one to want to go out and throw more salt on the yard, right? Sunflower seed hull ash. I gotta say, this is the first fertilizer I've ever used with some sunflower seed in it. Basically, that is a very slow, controlled release form of potassium. That's basically all it is. And the protein hydrolysate is basically a form of amino acids that, in a nutshell, is going to make the nutrients in the bag uh, more available to the plant, the root system of the plant, and make them available for a longer period of time. It's really nice outside and people are walking up and down the street and they're looking at me over here sitting, talking on the, talking to a camera, sitting here at the table. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> they're looking at me really, really weird, I'm telling you. And now you can start putting all this together, the slow control release aspects of it and more available, available longer, uh, all the different aspects of color in here uh, now you see why well, you can get 90 days of feed out of it. It's pretty unique the way they've done this and made it so it will feed the turf for a longer period of time. And another really cool thing about it is they have it formulated in a way that uh, from day one, you know, to the end of the duration of the feed, all the nutrients, not just one or two of them, but all of them tend to release out evenly over that whole entire 90 day period which is that's pretty cool when you take a fertilizer and you can feed uh turf over a long extended period of time and you don't have to keep making inputs to the turf it you know it, at the end of the day it saves money right so hey there you go that's the protein in a nutshell and of course i could probably you could somebody could sit here and talk about it for hours and hours and go into extreme detail on every little bit of it but um honestly i care less about all that i like it because when i put it on my grass it makes my grass green and it makes it grow that's what i like about it so sorry i know it's a long video but i wanted to pack a lot into it and um again we're gonna we'll keep an eye on this and you feel free to watch the videos and you just look at the yard and then you can make a judgment on it for yourself. The rest of the lineup that we're going to be using, I'll have them in hand as right before we get to the season to where we're supposed to use it. But all those will be showing up throughout the year as we get to the time of the year you use them. And then going into next year, I'll have them all at all time of the year. 
uh, you know, warehouse ain't so big, right? You can't keep so much stuff under one roof. So we had to kind of stage this out throughout the year and get the, the, the different analysis coming uh, as we use them. And then of course, you, you always have leftover. And so going into next year, 2022, uh, we'll have a you know a little bit of a build up of all the different ones uh, for you to pick from. So hey, I appreciate you taking time out of your day. Thank you for watching. And um, it was my birthday the other day, and so we're going out to eat to the Japanese uh, restaurant where they sh 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 cook it in front of you. I absolutely love that stuff. Next week uh, we'll be going to Philadelphia with my son for his next surgery. Uh, so those of you who don't mind, you, you can pray over him. And let me say this right quick. I know it's a long video, so I'm sorry, but I got to get this off my chest. Uh, that smile.amazon where uh, people, you know, use that Amazon to buy stuff and select my son's charity. Amazon gives 1% of the sales to the foundation. I know 1% don't sound like a lot, but. Let me, let me throw this at you. To date, since I started mentioning that, there's over $1,000 in there. So if you do the math on that, that means $100,000 has been spent with Amazon and the, the people that bought that $100,000 worth of stuff, of course, it was over a bunch of different people doing that, selected Team Jacks as the foundation and so Amazon, out of that $100,000 spent, sent $1,000 to uh, the foundation. And we get to take that money when we go to Philadelphia and give it to a family that may or may not need it. I, that's, I don't, you know, that's none of my business whether they need it or not. But being obedient to God and giving, we get to take that money, give it to these people, and say, hey, God loves you. Uh, God's going to supply your needs. We want you to take this money, use it, take care of your kid, take care of your travel, hotel room, food, whatever. Take care of it. And you guys are helping us do that. So my wife and I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, it's just incredibly cool to take a video camera and make videos about grass. And here we are taking money uh, and giving it to people that need it. Uh, it's just, it's so crazy how God works sometimes. I'm telling you, it's crazy. So, there you go. I'm going to go get something to eat. I'll check you later.